that? Oh, yes, especially heat. And that was actually going to be the next question I asked. Beyond just temperature change, if exhibits are exposed, for example, to fire, that can ruin the DNA quality. Is that right? Oh, yes. It okay. would destroy it. Okay. And so even though there may be DNA present, if an item is burned, that DNA may not show up anymore. Correct. Okay. Um, another thing that I want to ask you about, and it, it doesn't appear to have happened here, but during the amplification process, different in the middle row here, right, right there, you, you guys use a red dye referred to as rocks dye. Is that correct? Uh, no, actually, that middle one is green. Oh, okay. It's on the bottom row that, that it's red. Is that right? Actually, that's yellow. Okay. The red <laughs> in in Profiler Plus and Cofiler. Red is used for the size standard, so okay. it actually is not the analyzed alleles in that particular kit. In other kits, it is used. Okay. And uh, rather than guessing at every color in the world, I guess the point that I'm trying to get to is that occasionally when amplification is occurring, dye can bleed over and cause a, a false peak pattern that you would see at regular intervals as an example on the bottom row. Is that true? Yes, especially in the bottom row where yellow is the dye, um, there can be what we call pull-up from a different color. And usually in yellow, the pull-up comes from red, which is the internal size standard. Okay. And that isn't anything that's occurring here. I'm just asking you that as a general matter, correct? Yes. That's something that we can very easily identify. Okay. Now, I want to go through... Um, some of your specific findings, because um, Mr. Fuchs asked about inclusion, but I want to ask you about parties that were excluded from some of these different items. So starting with uh, States Exhibit 103C, which is TPD 48 FDLE 3, a scraping of Brandy Peter's right middle finger. You testified on direct that of course, Ms. Peters' DNA was present, correct? TPD Exhibit 48? TPD 48, FDLE 3, States Exhibit 103C. Yes. Um, isn't it also true, though, that uh, the twins who have the same DNA, Javante, Henry, that is, Mr. Segura, the defendant, were all excluded as possible contributors to that sample. They did not match the, um, the foreign donor, correct. And um, in this particular sample, 103C, there were only a contribution by females. Is that right? There was no Y marker there. There was, was no Y, correct. Okay. So what that means, we're looking at amlogenin right there, which is the gender indicator. Is that correct? Correct. And if we see a peak for an X and a Y, as we see here, you know that there's going to be some contribution by a male, correct? That's correct. And if there's only an X peak right there, that means that at least as far as the electropherogram is showing, only females have contributed to the sample. That's correct. Okay. So um, was this one of the samples, by the way, that you came back later and compared to DNA of friends, family, officers, other people who were potentially on scene? Yes, I believe so. And for 103C, all of those folks were excluded. Is that, is that correct? Yes. And just to clarify again, that's the scraping from under Brandy Peter's right middle finger, right? Yes. Okay. Moving on then to states 103H, which is TPD 53, FDLE 8, a scraping of Brandy Peter's left middle finger. Again, you said Brandy's DNA, of course, is there. She's included as a contributor to the mixture, right? Yes. Um, and again, you found there that the twins, Javante, Mr. Segura, the defendant, and others were all excluded from that contribution. Is that correct? Well, let me take a look at it just to be sure. sure.
Yes. Um, Tanaya, Tamaya, Javante, and Henry Segura were all excluded. Is that the question? Yes, ma'am. And again, that was stage 103H, TPD 53, FDLE 8, which is the scraping of Brandy Peters' middle finger. Yes. Left middle finger, sorry. Okay, and on states exhibit 103I, which is TPD 54, FDLE 9, scraping of Brandy Peters' left ring finger. I'll give you a second to get there. There was only one foreign allele at one of the markers, and all of those people, Tanaya, Tamaya, Javante, and Henry Segura, were all excluded. Yes. Um, and I suppose it's helpful at this point to uh, to stop and ask you to explain in a little more detail when we ter when we use the term foreign allele or foreign contribution to a mixture. That means there's DNA present, which uh, does not belong to the people that you listed, all, all known parties that you have profiles for, none of those people contributed to this mixture, correct? Well, when I use the word foreign, I mean that obviously this is a fingernail that belonged to Brandy, so I would expect her DNA to be there, which it is. So anything that I find that is not hers, that is a foreign allele. However, all of those people that I mentioned do not have that particular allele that's showing up. And again, so that includes, in addition to all the victims and Mr. Segura, Miss Peter's mother, her sisters, who she'd been in recent contact with, um, and, and the law enforcement officers who responded to the scene. None of the people we know were recently around Brandy were found to have been a contributor to the mixture under her fingernails, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, moving on to States Exhibit 82, which is TPD 73, FDLE 21 a swab of the interior front door deadbolt. Just let me know when you're there. Yes. Okay. On that one, uh, it was Brandy Peters. The twins uh, were both included. Is that correct? Yes. But in addition to the twins and Brandy, well, I guess let me ask you this first. This is an all-female data set, correct? There's no Y marker at amylogenin on this one? That's correct. Okay. Um, so you were also able to identify on States 82, TPD 73, FDLE 21, the swab of the interior front door deadbolt, foreign female DNA. That is DNA not belonging to the twins or Brandy, correct? Yes. Was this one of the samples that you did the same thing um, that we were talking about a minute ago, where you compared it also to all the known parties who were around the victims uh, leading up to their death, officers, um, family members, friends, things of that nature? Well, I have to check.
which individuals were you asking me about? Um, that, that same group that we were talking about with respect to uh, the fingernail scrapings and the front door there. Um, Brandy's mother, her sisters, the responding law enforcement officers, and other individuals known to have been in recent contact, friends of Brandy's who were re in recent contact with her. Were all those folks that you had known standards for excluded? I'm not sure what the relationships are, but these are the ones that I had. Marquisha Larry, Taisha Williams, Mariah Peters, Talisa Williams, Cassandra Williams, Azure Minot, Mary Richard Williams. All of those were excluded from that particular exhibit, yes. And again, this is a all-female sample. There's no, no Y marker for States 82, TPD 73, FDLE 21, correct? That's correct. Okay. Okay, the, the next one I want to ask about is actually this sample that's up here. Uh, states 35, TPD 33, FDLE 24, the swab of the phone cradle. Can you tell us first and foremost how you would characterize the sample, I guess, is the easiest way to ask that question? Well, this is a mixture. It's a low-level mixture. And... Um, how many people did you determine were contributing or potentially contributing to this to this mixture? Well, it looks as though um, there are only two. However, if you look at the the locus out here, you see how the um, peak heights are not equal. So that's indicating there could be a third person there. And, and that's one of the general principles of interpretation you talked about before, that you would expect peak heights that are coming from the same person to be almost the same in terms of their height, correct? Yes. And these, I think I have the same one here. Here, um, that 24 is 576 RFUs. The 26 is 274, so that's about half, 50%, uh, and that indicates that that's probably more than one person contributing to that. And uh, that, that's one of the topics that's covered by FDLE interpretive guidelines, right? You validated interpretive guidelines that were to be used with these kits, and one of the things that those interpretive guidelines talked about is peak heights can only vary by a certain percentage if you're going to call them as belonging to the same person. Is that true? To belong to the same person, our lowest limit was 60%. And this one you said was down around 58? 50 okay. or so. So um, which, uh, which of the allele or potential allele showing up on this mixture here were you able to identify as foreign to the victims? Of the entire? Yes, no? ma'am. Okay. Where did this go? There we go. Here, uh, 1517 are the only two alleles showing up, and Brandy's type is 1517. So I called the major 1517, and the minor I had to call inconclusive because I couldn't see anything minor. But it's possible that whoever's minor in there is has a 15 and or a 17. And, and can, so can you explain masking in a little more detail um, to the jury and, and explain how that's a problem of particular importance when you're dealing with uh, samples that could potentially include a contribution by multiple related persons? Yes. As we see it, see here, there's only a 15 and a 17, and that's Brandy's type. The um, children... At that locus, the girls are 1517 as well, and Javante is 1717. So, are the girls and Javante included there? They could be, because there's so much DNA here from the major component, I can't really tell if that's shared with another um, contributor. And that happens especially when you have uh, related people that we're trying to analyze. However, over here, at VWA, we see the two large peaks, and I called a major as 1518, and that is Brandy's type. Then there is a 14 and a 17. Now, I can't be absolutely sure that those go together. There could be three people there. 
the second person could have a 14, 15, for instance, and the third person could have a 17, 18, for instance. The girl's type at that locus is 14, 15, and Javante's is 15, 18. So I can't tell if Javante is there, just masked by his mother, um, but the 14 could, could have come from the girls. The thing that is foreign is that 17. None of the people in the family have a 17. So um, that is what I would call foreign then. Okay. And then uh, moving on to FGA, is there any, um, are there any allele or potential allele showing up there that are foreign to the victims? Okay. Brandy's type is 24, 26. She is the, um, oh, actually I did the computation. It's only 40%. There. And because of dropout, it's possible that those do go together. I mean, they go together, but is there someone else contributing to that 24? I don't know for sure. But I can say for sure that the 21 and the 25 are foreign to everyone in the family. Um, that actually raises another question I, I'd like to ask you about. So, for example, you were indicating there that the, the 24 and the 26, those two peaks right there, the, the biggest two peaks there at FGA, could go together, but we have a, a disproportion in peak height there, correct? Correct. And one of the things that that can indicate is multiple people with a 24 showing up. When, when multiple people on a sample have the same number, those numbers can stack on top of each other sometimes. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Okay. So um, just to clarify then, which ones were potentially foreign at FGA? At FGA, None of the children or Brandy have a 21 and a 25. So those are the minor component. But they are below 100. And, and this may be uh, an important time or a good time to talk about. Um, can you tell the jury what a genotype is and how it's relevant if you're going to try and do inclusion, inclusion statistics? Well, a genotype just refers to all the alleles you have at all of these markers. And so, for example, I know you didn't do this here, um, but if you were trying to determine, for example, a minor contributor, you would have to have at least one marker or locus where you have a full set of DNA from any potential minor contributor. Is that right? Not exactly. <laughs> There's a more nuanced answer. <laughs> a little more. Okay. For instance, um, as I was saying, with the mother and the children, um, she is going to have, the mom is going to have at least one of the alleles that the children have. So there could be a mixture from the, of the mother and the children, and it wouldn't necessarily look like there was a full minor component there because hers would be, one of her alleles is masking one of the children's. Generally, when you're dealing with unrelated persons, um, with the principle that I was trying to articulate with the last question, which is that if you're gonna identify a clear major and a clear minor, in order to do inclusion statistics for a minor with unrelated persons, you would need a genotype, that is, two allele present from the minor contributor at at least one marker? Again, uh, it's possible that they share alleles, so it's possible that there's only three, that there's only one allele that's foreign to the person you know who's there. And, and I was, I was going to ask you this as well relative to inclusion statistics. Um, FDLE has a bank of frequency of occurrence for each of these different alleles at each of these different locus, correct? A data set that we use, yes. And that was based on some objective study where somebody, you know, determined what the frequency of occurrence in a given genetic population was, is that right? Yes. And those statistics, that is how frequently a particular number occurs at a particular locus, that's based on a frequency of occurrence in unrelated individuals, correct? That's correct. There is no data bank for frequency of occurrence with related individuals? No. Okay. All right, so, so then moving on to uh, amylogenin, down in the second row, we see a 1820 RFU value for the okay. X and only a 398 for the Y. What would that tell you, if anything, about the relative proportion of male to female DNA in this particular mixture? Well, it would tell me that the major component is female the minor component includes at least one male. And I, since you broke it down like that, let me ask you this as well. 
we talked about potentially doing inclusion statistics for a major contributor or a minor contributor. You can do inclusion statistics to the mixture as a whole as well. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And so then moving on to, what is that right there? This one here, the second one on the second row. I think that's D5. D8. D8, okay. Is there anything foreign that you were able to identify at D8? <coughs> Excuse me. The major component is 1115 and the minor component is 12, a 12 allele. And, and what does it mean when it says 12 plus? That means it could be 12 plus anything else. And the reason for that is it's so low. It's 191 RFUs. That's taking into account possible dropout. Okay. Now like the, you talked about before. Yes. Okay. The girls do have a 12 at D8, and so does Javante. Is, uh, I, I don't think I asked you this question specifically relative to this sample. Is dropout prevalent throughout this sample? Yes. If you look over here, well, first of all, these are starred alleles, so they're very low. These, um, we don't, how, they're so low that, um, there could be another allele that goes with that 18. The 18 is only at 79, so there could be a 20 or something else that goes with it. That just falls off the reading altogether because the quantity is so small. Yes, so in that case, we would use an 18 plus, meaning it could be 18 and anything else. Anything else that's not showing up due to dropout. Correct. Okay. And then moving on down here, how did I, I guess I skipped uh, D21. Did you, were you able to identify any foreign DNA at D21? At D21, Brandy's type is 25, 28, and those are the only alleles there, so I had to call the minor inconclusive at that locus. Okay. Same principle you were just talking about, no evidence at all for, of contribution from anybody else, and you don't know whether it's masked or whether it just fell off. Correct. Okay. Um, how about at D18? At D18, um, the major component is 1719, which is Brandy's type, and the minor component is an 18 plus. Okay. For the same reason we just talked about? Yes. All right. And then down on the bottom row, I guess this one's D5. Yes. Any foreign contribution there? Um, well, the major is 1111, and that is what Brandy's type is. Um, then there's a um, very minor 7 and 12. And actually, the girls have a 7 there, and it turns out that that's a very rare allele. Um, you wouldn't expect it to just pop up. In fact, the, the, um, the database tables that you were talking about listed as zero percentage in African Americans. So it's an extremely uncommon. It's uncommon. The we reason the girls have it is that their father has it. Um, so I wanted to take that into consideration as possibly uh, the girls' seven is there. After all, this is a phone cradle that they could have touched. So. And I'm not sure I asked this question precisely before. You said at first glance this may appear to be a clean two-donor mixture, correct? Correct. But because we have masking due to uh, potential contributors being related and due to the fact that there's prevalent dropout throughout, you talked about that there may be additional folks contributing to this mixture, correct? Correct. And that's why we've been going through identifying foreign DNA, that is DNA foreign to all four victims. Right. Okay. Um, under the FDLE interpretive guidelines, you, you would say that in order to have a clean two-donor mixture, where you know it's two donors, you would have to have four allele present at whatever locus you're talking about with, without evidence of contribution from any third or fourth party, correct? Correct. Um, and to have a clean three-donor mixture, you'd have to have six. If they were unrelated. If they were unrelated. Yes. And, and again, in a, in a data set where folks are related, same, same thing. There's going to be masking because everybody shares alleles, correct? Correct. And in a low volume sample like this, the same thing as we've been talking about, there's going to be dropout likely, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, moving along down here to D13, any foreign contribution down there? Um, <clears throat> the type there, the major type is 1111, which is Brandy's type. So the 12 is the minor component. Okay. And then lastly, we've got D7 on this page. Uh, D7 um, actually is 
tested for in both Cofiler and Profiler. And in, in this, this one is Profiler Plus, and in this case, as you can see, everything dropped out for that allele. No readings whatsoever. For um, this particular one. For profile. I think I might have had it on Cofiler, but I'm not sure. I did have a result on Cofiler for Absolutely. D7. Both D7 is in both Profiler Plus and Cofiler. So this is what I'm showing now is 1B, previously admitted. Um, explain why there's some overlap, if you could, between the Cofiler and Profiler pages. Why, why do they report uh, data on some of the same locus? Well, I believe that the companies made it that way just to make sure that you know, you had put the same DNA in both of the tubes. It's two separate tubes. And so it's just a double check to see that D3 is one that overlaps and D7 is one that overlaps those two kits. Okay. Uh, any additional foreign contribution at D3 or D7 that we didn't see on the profiler page? Well, on D7, um, the major component is 11 and 12, and the minor component is 10. Um, and the minor, com the minor component is foreign to the four victims? Is that, is that what you were saying? No. Um, the girls have a 10 there, and so does Javante. Okay. So that may be an instance of the kids kicking in, potentially. That's kids. possible. Okay. Um, what about at the top right here? I can't. It looks like maybe D16. D16. Is um, there any evidence of contribution by a foreign party there? Um, the major is 913, which is Brandy's type. There is a minor component of 11. Uh, Javante does have an 11. So nothing foreign to the victims there. Is that right? Well, I actually considered that Javante and the girls were excluded from this, although I did take it into consideration that sometimes something like that, that rare seven is showing up from the girls. So that, that's one of those situations where you could potentially note that a party is excluded, but based on the circumstances or the type of object, for example, this we're here we're talking about a phone cradle that was found um, in Brandy Peter's bedroom, something that you would expect people to handle regularly. You take that into account and you make logical assumptions or inferences about the potential contribution of other people who would regularly handle that. Is that, is that I right? try to, yes. Okay. And that's something that you would note. If it's a regular exclusion where you're saying with certainty that somebody did not contribute, that would be made clear in the reports that you provide to law enforcement, the state, and the defense, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, I don't think we had THO on, uh, on the profiler page. Is there any evidence of contribution by a foreign donor there? Um, the major component is 7-7, seven, seven, which is Brandy's type. And the, <clears throat> the 8 and the 9 are be, being very small. I consider those minor components. The girls have a 7 and 8, and so does Javante. So 9 is definitely foreign. Okay. Um, what about it moving across there, the next one, t -pox. Is there any evidence of contribution at that locus? Um, Brandy's type is 810. That's the major component. The minor component is 9. Javante does have a 9 there. All right. And then I can't see what the last one is. Is that CSF? Yes. On the far right on the second row. Any evidence of contribution by a foreign party there? No. There was just 1114, which was Brandy's type, and I could not identify a minor, so that is inconclusive for the minor. And then the last one, it looks like down on the third row, D7 is the only one where you got interpretable data. Am I seeing that right? Um, the major there was 1112, and the 10 was the minor contributor. Is that Although the girls and Javante both have a, all have a 10. So not necessarily foreign contribution down at D7? Not necessarily. Possible, though. Okay. Yes. <laughs> If, given how messy the sample is with dropout, related people, and low RFU values, if you were going to do uh, inclusion, would you do inclusion to the mixture as a whole, or would you try to do it for a minor contributor? I would do um, 
the mixture as a whole. However, due to our rules at FDLE, I could only use the loci that did not have any star alleles for statistics. So that's what you were talking about before. You could use those start alleles with low RFU values between 50 and 100 to exclude people. Correct. Like Mr. Segura, who's excluded from the sample, correct? Yes. But you can't do inclusion statistics using start allele. Correct. Okay. Um, if you had a, a known uh, profile, a set of uh, standards that you were going to try and do inclusion, which method of inclusion statistic would you choose to do here? Would you try to do it to the to the mixture as a whole using only allele for an allele above the 100 RFU threshold? Or would you do it, try to identify clearly the minor contributor and do it in, in, that, in that way? No, I would use it as a whole, which means if there's only a few loci that could be used for inclusion that don't have starred alleles, one of them is VWA, another one is D8, and I would, what I would do is use statistics for using all of those alleles, including the major ones, since okay. they could be shared. Again, it's more likely that they'd be shared in this case because everybody's related, correct? Correct. Okay. Or at least everybody, all the victims are related, I mean to say. Okay. Um, I'll take this down now. The, uh, the next sample that I wanted to ask you about is uh, STATES 36, which is TPD 34, FDLE 25, a swab of the handset associated with that same telephone that was found in Brandy Peters' bedroom. Okay. Were you able to make a determination about potential contributors to that mixture? There was a mixture that included um, one male. There is a Y. I'm not sure how many males, I should say. There is a Y, at least one male. And one foreign allele at D3. It appears that Tamaya and Tanaya are the major contributors to this profile. Um, were Brandy and Javante included as potential contributors as well? I have to read my report. I could not determine major and minor contributors. Brandy, Tamaya, Tanaya, and Javante are all included as possible contributors. And just that one, one foreign potential allele at D3, you said? Yes. Okay. Um, what about states 34, which is TPD 32, FDLE 23, a swab of the phone cord, the end of the cord, again, associated with the same telephone found in Brandy Peters' bedroom? Were you able to identify the major contributor and identify other included parties for this sample? I excluded everyone. Oh, I'm sorry. All the individuals that I had gotten in addition to the family, the sister, mother, et cetera, they were all excluded as contributors to that one. And Mr. Segura was excluded as a potential contributor as well, right? Yes. Okay. With the twins as the major donor and Brandy and Javante being included as potential contributors to the mixture?
I don't want to find that. <laughs> Sorry. Take your time. I know you're having to refer to multiple reports for these. Yeah. Yes, it's a mixture of Tania and Tamaya, who are major, Bra uh, Brandy Peters, and Javante. Okay, and then you started to mention all those other standards for folks who had family members, police officers, the defendant, Mr. Segura, all those folks were excluded as potential contributors, correct? Yes. Okay. How about States 26, TPD 17, FDLE 44, which is the projectile found in the hallway closet? Were you able to determine that uh, Mr. Segura was excluded from the DNA found on the exterior of that projectile? Yes. Uh, and to be clear, um, was there foreign DNA identified? There was so little DNA identified that we call that only DNA results. And actually, Brittany, or Brandy, I'm sorry, Tania, Tamaya, and Javante are all excluded. Okay, so Mr. Segura and all four victims are excluded as having contributed to the DNA found on that projectile. Yes. Okay. Um, let's go to States 76, which is TBD 71 and FDLE 71. There are a couple of different parts. There's Area 4 and Area 5 that I'm asked about. We'll go to Area 5 first. This is the shovel okay. that was found next to Brandy's body. Yes. Um, were you able to identify DNA uh, that was foreign to the four victims on this item in Area Number 5? The major matched Brandy Peters, and it was a red-brown stain. The minor components were so... Uh, low that we would just call those DNA results, and all were excluded, yes. So when you say all were, ex all were excluded, that means Javante and the twins were excluded, correct? Yes. Mr. Segura was excluded. Yes. And all of the other folks that we've talked about, the family, friends, officers, they were all excluded as well, correct? Yes. So we've identified a foreign male contributor to this mixture. Yes. Okay. What about with area number four? Were, uh, were all three of the children excluded again? Um, there were only DNA results, and the amylogenin showed XX, so Javante would be excluded. I can't say that anybody else is excluded. Oh, the only result showing up on that one was at the amylogenin marker? Yes. And, and That'll happen sometimes if it's a really poor sample because amylogenin is generally the easiest to amplify. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So that was a very low quantitative value for the biological material in that sample? Yes. It's off the, it was off of the edge of the shovel blade. Considering it's a shovel, there was probably dirt on it. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask you quickly about a couple of these other ones. Um, states 58, TPD 28, FDLE 55, a swab of the blood on the door frame of the bathroom, the common bathroom off of the hallway. That was a single donor sample where the twins are the identified contributor, yes. correct? Yes. Okay. And same thing with States Exhibit 72, TPD 45, FDLE 67, a swab of the blood on the uh, couch cushion out in the living room. That was yes, it was a complete profile and it matched Tonaya to Maya. Okay. Um, uh, number 17, States Exhibit 17, which is TPD 8, FDLE 38, a swab of blood on the hallway floor near the common bathroom. This is a mixture, correct? Yes. And you were able to identify the twins as the major contributor? Yes. With Brandy, the defendant, Mr. Segura, and Javante all being excluded? Yes. And you were able to identify a foreign minor contributor as well, correct?
Well, I could not um, determine a DNA profile for the min minor contributor. And Brandy, Henry, Segura, Antonio, Anthony, Javante, and the officers are all excluded to the mixed DNA profile. But I did not determine an actual profile for the minor contributor. There wasn't enough DNA there. Right. We were only able to say that the victims and all the other people you had standards for were not the contributors. Correct. So we would con consider that, although we don't have a profile, we could we would consider that foreign contribution. Yes. Okay. Um, I want to ask you about States Exhibit 63, which is TPD 126 FDLE 116, a swab of the bath car. May I approach the witness back? Good night. We'll probably get pretty close to the point where we need a break. This is probably All right. Can we take 10 minutes? Right? Either side need anything? No, you're here. All right. Take 10 minutes? 